It's that time of the year. We're bison ranching today. Spring handling. And it's Dunbar's last time at Ponderosa. Hey guys, good morning. I'm Dusty. Welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. It is spring working day. We've got the big Joe Herd up here in our trap. The man himself, Mr. Haas, and 36 females minus Eleanor. We kept her out in the pasture. It's much easier to keep her out there. Guys, we're working all these guys today. Whoa. Good morning. Good morning, buddy. These guys are going to be worked as fast as possible like we always do. Doc is gonna be here very shortly he's bringing his system down we're gonna set it up we've got help coming today kevin my stepdad my brother-in-law daniel from arms family homestead old mud you guys seen mud before he always comes and helps my high school helper eli will be here today maybe some other folks and of course my beautiful wife is gonna help us today it's gonna be exciting there's some babies back there we're gonna let them out because i'm not worried about them we can dart those mamas later with the dart gun but they're looking healthy fleshy if you want to know the, the sad part it's the last time dunbar will be worked here we made some plans for dunbar and he is uh gonna leave the ponderosa it has been extremely difficult and caused lots of problems having two mature bulls here big joe and dunbar things are gonna be hopefully a lot easier he's just gonna be pulled out of the ponderosa he's probably going back to the original place for now and then we're gonna try to do some other stuff with him Dunbar's not leaving the program. He's not leaving Cross Timmer's Bison. He's our baby boy. Always will be. We're going to bring you right in, guys. Hope you're ready for it. Excited for today. Go. Ho. Shoo. You guys did this to me yesterday. Go. Shoo. Go, bull. Go. Shoo. Shoo. All right, so we're putting our girls up in the trailer for a little bit, do a little trailer training. In the meantime, it's kind of the safest place for them, the way we're working them today. So I'm gonna put core up in here first. My trailer, you can lock them into three sections, so it's good practice for them. Come on. Come on. Took her a minute, but she got in here. She's being a good girl, finally. She had to get all the smells in. I'm sure it estranged her. Easy. It's okay. Just for a little bit. It's okay. Good girl. It's a lot going on. Core's in there waiting on you. Good girl. Come on. Right out of the gate, we started with Dunbar. Go to the left side, five 
Today, all of the bison, including the adults and the calves, are receiving two antiparasitic medication, which is basically dewormer, sidectin and long range. These are the same dewormers that Doc uses at his vet service. Man, I don't feel like it goes in there. It's so thick right there. Okay, but I'm glad you got my back. It's good. 128? 128? Uh, 128, Dusty? Oh, 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 Canada. 128, 925. Gotcha. She gained, she gained like 115 pounds. Dunbar and some of the cows that he was with have already been worked and pinned back up. And the Big Joe herd is rolling through now. Just as we started getting into a rhythm and everything was going great, you can't have it working without something going wrong. What? Huh? He's got a panel open? Dunbar's got a panel open. It must not have been chained. Eli happened to notice some activity going on in the back area, which is located here where Kevin and Daniel were taking the Big Joe herd and cutting them into small groups so we could run them through the alley and into the squeeze chute. Dunbar was able to get nose to nose with Big Joe momentarily, and it didn't take too long. Dunbar started getting pretty active, hitting some of the freestanding panels and almost letting the entire Big Joe herd out into the same pen Dunbar was already in. So the first thing that came to my mind that we needed to accomplish is let's get Big Joe worked and get him out to the pasture and away from Dunbar completely separated. This is not the easiest task to perform when you're trying to get the biggest animal in the group separated and worked. And there's red dogs in this pen, and so we gotta keep them safe as possible. The idea is to break up this large Big Joe herd into smaller increments, which is much safer and easier to work all the animals and handle them for Kevin and Daniel. Ideally, we want about six or seven or eight adults in one batch to get them up into this holding area used by the pusher which Daniel was driving and we can start using Doc's system to catch them all. But it don't always work that way. How we check every animal is Doc will typically read off the tag number of the animal to Marissa and then the weights. Marissa will write the weights down, then we'll enter them in our Excel spreadsheet on our computer later on. Yeah. Yeah. Houston's got a paddle, babe. Houston? These guys have 
this owner. I was happy to see my nephew Houston Arms show up today. It was his, really his first time to the working where he could actually is old enough to help. He did a really good job for his first time handling the bison. Very thankful for Daniel for coming over and driving the skid steer and using the pusher that we have. The pusher has made a huge difference on what we do. We can take so many people out of this situation because we have the pusher on the skid steer. And you can see here, only one person is on foot helping gate cut and stuff, which is Kevin. This is how fast things can change. And right here, Watch this calf quickly sneak in behind Kevin and almost the cow as well. This group is getting smaller and smaller, with only some cows and heifers left from the Big Joe group, which are some of the Wolverine and South Dakota females, and an incoming three-year-old bull, Mr. Haas. After this, the calves are up, and that's it. Now it's time for the calves. We've got a group of about 15 2023 20, calves. They're gonna get their dewormer, we're gonna get their weights, but about four or five of them, we're gonna take some tissue sampling for DNA testing. Doing something a little bit different. We've got a new tissue sampling unit. Made by Allflex that we're gonna try this time and see how it goes. Mark and Cease talked me into this, so. It goes in the ear. Are you sure you know how to operate this thing? No, I do not. <laughs> well, because it was an unusual tool and it was the first time we used it, 
we had to break out the instructions. The red connection piece. I know, it's on so, here. okay. So we'll just ride it down per cabs. I'm only, I'm not doing all of them. I'm gonna focus on some of When we typically want to get some DNA sampling or some parentage linkage testing, we typically use the hair from the very end of the tail. But some of my bison friends, Mark and Cease from Wolverine Bison, told me about this new way of collecting some DNA instead of pulling hair. With this tissue sampler, we basically put a little vial or the actual sample unit into the gun, put the sample unit in there, and it just takes a little chunk of tissue out of their ear and is put into a sterile bottle which is marked with an identification number we will also label the little sample unit with our own tag number of that animal as well it's going to take some getting used to but i think this is a pretty effective way to take tissue samples for dna testing and the labs are actually preferring bison producers or ranchers in general that are going to send in tissue samples to do it this way instead of using hair follicles so this is the new method and we're trying it out i'm writing the numbers down in here i don't know if that's the proper way to do it so we're gonna hope well, so we have to anyways when you send it in well, i know so well this one is messed up or something so yeah just leave it i we'll left it blank it. okay we'll fix it all right i'm hoping I'm taking the proper documentation on all this probably Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's video and you want to help support what we do of raising the American bison right here in southern Oklahoma, doing our part to help support the heritage and the culture and the restoration of the nation's mammal, we have a variety of bison products that we have on our website at crosstimmersbison.com and two of my favorite things right here, 100% bison snack sticks. We've got original and honey barbecue. We have meat boxes. We've got merch. We've got summer sausage, lots of great products you can check out on our website. Scan the QR code right here or go straight to our website with the link in the description. I want to thank all my help today. I want to thank my wife, Marissa. Always keeps me in line and helps me make sure I have everything covered. Does a great job of helping film too as well and writing down all the tag numbers and weights. I want to thank Eli, my helper. Daniel for driving the skid steer. Luckily, Daniel's used to driving almost the same exact skid steer and he just hopped in and, and did great. I want to thank Kim. I want to thank Kevin for all of his help getting there on foot, probably doing the most dangerous part of the job of working these animals. I want to thank Kim as well. I also want to thank Houston for his first time really working the bison. He's getting older and more mature and figuring things out and he did a great job today and I was proud that he was out there helping us. I also want to give a big thanks for Doc for allowing us to hire him out and rent a system to bring it all the way down from Stratford so we can work these animals safely and effectively. Just having him look at our animals and give us some experience, advice on what he thinks and just his knowledge. We just appreciate him. I want to thank everybody for being a part of it. Guys, it's going to get even more exciting, and I hope you're ready for what's about to happen because the day got even a little bit wilder than it does there in working because these animals are going out on the green grass. We had a wild way to get them out there. Can't wait to bring it to you. Stay tuned. We got some fun stuff coming up, guys. We'll keep you updated with Dunbar. This is going to be our biggest year for calving season. We could potentially have up to 30 calves this year. We're going to have a busy summer. I hope you guys can join us for the road and the journey. You guys stay tuned for the next video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll keep on bossing ranching.